Okay, hi. Um, in this video, we're going to be going over dynamic memory in C++. So we're going to look at looking at uh, dynamic memory variables, and I'm going to try to give you some higher level picture of doing memory management. So an important topic. Um, so we'll, we'll look over the basics of dynamic variables. So how you use new to allocate uh, memory dynamically, and then how you use de uh, delete to deallocate uh, memory to free it back up. Uh, I got a few things to say about arrays and pointers um, and, uh, and and dynamically allocating arrays. Um, and we'll look at um, uh, some operations on pointer variables. And then at the end, though, the, the, hopefully the, 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 the thing that will be most useful is we'll look at an example of using uh, some dynamic memory to do a kind of a somewhat realistic um, data structure. So we'll be expend extending our list type that we've been using a bit. Um, okay, so um, on our example code here, uh, I'll go ahead and build this, make certain that we're all building here, uh, sort of breakpoint at the top. So, um, and let's run it. So at the most basic level, um, the new, there, I mean, there's two uh, kind of keywords that we're going to be adding here uh, for doing dynamic memory. So there's new and delete, okay? And these are really C++ things. So it, it used to be done differently uh, in vanilla C. So, so these were added to the C++ language. Uh, so if you do new and then you give a data type like this, it dynamically allocates uh, enough space to hold a, a, a new integer. And what, what's returned from the new statement is a, a pointer variable. So you have to understand how pointer variables work. So basically a pointer to an integer is returned, and we just, that, that's why we assign that back into a P, into a variable here called P. So P is just pointing to the newly allocated space that can hold an integer, and then we can do like what we did uh, before with a pointer variable. So we could uh, uh, use it to assign a value in there, 42. We can use it to read the value back out to whatever that's pointing to, um, and so on, okay? Um, now, again, you know, it's not very often that you just allocate a single simple variable like that. So. Uh, what you're more likely to do is to want to allocate either an array, so a whole block of variables in order to, to, to do an array, of, work with an array of them, um, or you might want to allocate, uh, dynamically allocate like a, a structure or a class. Um, I don't think I have an example of that in this, but we'll see some of that later on. So anyway, um, so the syntax is similar, so if, instead of a single integer, um, I wanted to get 16 integers, so an array of integers. It looks pretty much like the same, except we do something that looks kind of like that um, um, for, for the, the, the syntax for trading array again. So we use the open and close square brackets, and we get a size in there. So this will, this will dynamically allocate 16 integers um, and will uh, return a pointer to Q here, okay? So... Um, So, you know, then again now, so I, I just point this out. Notice right away, the very first thing I start doing with this Q here, we don't treat it like a, a pointer here. Uh, we just treat it like it's an array now, okay? I'll talk more about that here in a second. But um, uh, Q is really the base address of an array of 16 integers after this dynamic allocation. So, everything you've learned about arrays, now that you've dynamically allocated that, you can just treat Q like an array of size 16, an array of, of 16 integers. So, um, uh, so here we can initialize the, the values to have the, the, at the indexes to have the values 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Um, and then we can, so that, that was actually assigning or writing values, and we can read them back out again, the same thing. And, and again, we're just using normal array indexing syntax to treat Q as, as a, I mean, it is just a regular um, array of integers. So uh, if we do that, you know, we can read it back out, so we can see that it did get the values 1, 3, 5, so all the odd numbers. 
Um, so why is why you know why would we do that? Okay, I mean, so uh, I mean, this at the moment this looks like just a, a different, slightly different syntax for declaring an array. So what's different about this and um, uh, declaring an array like this? Um, uh, this this is the, the declaring it using the new keyword. Um, we refer to that as dynamically. Uh, declaring the array or dynamically allocating the array. The way we've been doing it before, this is usually referred to as a, a static allocation, so, so statically allocating the, the array. Um, so for, for one thing, um, you can't, um, you know, you have to use a constant um, when you uh, specify a, a static array. So, so you have to use a, a constant expression, an expression that's known by the compiler when it compiles your code. So you, you can't use an expression like that to create an array where you don't know where, or for example, where you're going to get input for the size that you need maybe from the user or something like that. So, um, yeah, so by the way, I mean, number int was a constant defined as 16, like we've been doing before. So it works fine to, to declare it statically like that. But um, let's, let's, let's do something slightly differently here. So let's say, um, instead of doing this, yeah, I'll stop my debugger now. We'll ask the user to give us an, an, an integer number, okay? And then we'll try um, uh, statically declaring an array S this time, but using that input from the user. But, uh, you know, um, I mean, some compile kind of a warning, some compiler versions uh, would actually allow this to happen, but this is very dangerous to do. If you have a compiler that allows this to happen, to create a, a static array, but where uh, it doesn't, where the compiler doesn't actually know what that size is, it's not really doing what you think it's doing. And, and, and again, this is the same as uh, uh, read, writing values beyond the in, beyond the bounds of the array. So it's undefined what the size of this array would be, um, and um, um, if you try and use s, um, it would. Uh, uh, possibly you'd be overriding other memory, okay? So, but some compilers, um, I mean, it, it just uh, detects that and, and it doesn't allow it, and, and Visual Studio won't allow that. I'm not certain about some of the other compilers. So if you try and compile that, um, you should get a compile error, um, again, with a message of, of um, yeah, it's a pretty clear message. It's saying that it must have a constant value, this, this expression here. So, but uh, it's perfectly legal to do that dynamically because the uh, the, the statement to um, you know the, the new statement um, is getting the memory at runtime instead of at compile time. So it's dynamically allocating memory not from the stack but from uh, what's known as the heap. Uh, so it's perfectly fine then to uh, ask for you know an integer or to get some value from uh, an input file, for example, for a data file. Uh, so again, you wouldn't know it at compile time, but at, when you're running the program, that's when you know what the size of your array needs to be, um, and you do it, uh, and, and you actually do it and, and dynamically allocate the, the, the needed size, right? Um, so. So yeah, if we compile that, uh, we should be able to run it down to here. Um, oh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I had, uh, I had uh, commented out my input here. So anyway, but but yeah, that will work. So if, if you ever do need to, to to make an array based on like user input or input from a file, you should do it that way dynamically. So. Um, all right, and then um, uh, the the other operation for dynamic memory management is the delete operator. So um, if you allocate memory, you really should free it up. You should free it up when you're done using it. So if you're no longer using a piece of memory that you dynamically allocated, you should free it up using delete. All right. So to to uh, free up uh, a simple single variable that was dynamically allocated, you just use delete directly like this, to, to free up 
some memory, uh, a block of memory, so an allocation of an array of memory, you use this syntax, delete, again, in the square braces. So that's an indication that what you're trying to free up um, is an actual block of memory that, should, that needs to be freed up. Okay? Um, so, um, and um, I didn't have it in my, my video here or my example um, notes here, but just thinking about it, now that you can dynamically allocate memory um, and you can free it up, uh, so later on, this, this is the, usually what you do in like a destructor for a class. If your class dynamically allocates some memory, um, uh, when that class goes out of scope, when it's done, it ought to free up any memory that it, that's allocated. So uh, um, now I'm thinking about that. There's a bug in the example I'm going to show you here. So I, I think I'll add that up here at the end. Uh, add, add that in at the end of the video here. So, so those are the basics, uh, new and free, to dynamically create some memory. Um, so like I said, I mean, it, it might have been a little bit surprising to you when we dynamically created an array of memory. So let's look at that again. So, so here I'll create another, again, another array of integers. Um, Oh, another thing that I just thought of, I, I, all of my examples, I think I was dynamically creating integers or arrays of integers. I should have shown, um, you know, again, you can create, you can dynamically create um, uh, variables of, of any type. So I could create an array, dynamically create an array of characters. I could dynamically create like a, a structure, like a you know, like a, one of our list types or something like that that we've been using. So, so. Um, so you should just realize that. So, so uh, anyway, back to dynamically creating our array here. Um, so when, when you create like an array dynamically, like an array of integers, it returns a pointer to your type, a pointer to integer in this case, right? But this, this works fine because um, there is an equivalence between um, a pointer to a type and, an, and, and, and using an array, okay? So uh, I have, an, I have an, an example of an array like we've been using so far. This is a static allocation of an array. Uh, so uh, the, the, the way that you should know how to create arrays uh, before we started trying to work with dynamic memory allocation, right? So in the first case, we dynamically created an array of size uh, uh, whatever number int is. It's um, oh, it's zero here. Let's let's um, let me um, fix that. So uh, let me stop and rebuild here. Um, so, so we'll change number of ints to be ten, so that we dynamically create a, a number, a, a ten, a, an array of ten integers, and we statically create an array of ten integers. And let's run it, get it to that breakpoint. Um, there we are. So, um, so you know, if you dynamically create an array like that, you use it exactly like you would use a statically created array. So, you know, this is just illustrating that again. So we display all, actually we initialize all the values uh, in the two arrays, again to the odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, and nine. Um, and then we just display them uh, here. So let's, let's just go to that point. So we should see, you know, both of the, I mean, these are two separate arrays. It's not the same array. It's not pointing to the same thing. Two separate blocks of memory. One block of memory created statically on the stack. One block of memory created dynamically using the new. Okay. Um, so um, the 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 point you know I want to make here though is that a, a, a pointer to the to the fur to the base address of of an array of values is the same as the, the name of an array, okay? Or another way of saying that, if that was confusing, is whenever you declare an array like this, what it really is is that's just the, the, the base address of the block of memory that was allocated. So if I had 10 integers, uh, if the number of bits was 10, uh, each integer takes four bytes of, of memory. So if you create a block of memory, if, if you allocate an array of size 10 integers, it's going to actually um, allocate 40 bytes somewhere in memory to hold that array, whether you're uh, allocating it statically or dynamically. Okay, so and and uh, the all the the name of an array is is this just it's really just a pointer to the base address. It's, it's a pointer to the the beginning 
of that block of 40 bytes in this case. All right. So that means that you can actually use a pointer to an array um, in, uh, in, in, in a slightly different way in order to access or index the elements of an array. So here's an example of that, if, if I'm not being clear here. So let's, um, let's, let's step over. So, you know, we've got both my static array and my dynamic array. I'm just using it with my static array. I could have also pointed this to my, my dynamic array as well. Doesn't matter. They're both just arrays of, of uh, should be of 40 bytes or of 10 integers in this case, okay? So here, I, I create a pointer variable called pointer array, and I assign it my static array. So again, my static array is really just the base address of the array in memory called my static array. So when, by doing this, we're copying the base address into pointer array. So now this is an example of doing what's known as pointer arithmetic. If I increment that value three times, um, since this is a pointer to an integer, it knows that an integer is si has a size of four bytes. So you know, remember that a pointer is just a memory address. So every time I increment this, it actually increments the address by four in order to go to the next integer in the array. So this, this is equivalent, incrementing three times uh, and then assigning the value into that is equivalent to um, me uh, ass assigning a value um, to index three, like that, okay? So, um, um, so, and, and we can see that. So, again, let's, 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 I won't step through all that. Let's, um, um, run it down here. We're just going to print out both the static and dynamic array again and show the values. The only thing that we changed was should have been the third index in uh, what pointer array is pointing to. So the third index in my static array. All right. So if we look at it down there and and there we have it. So my static array, the third value got modified from seven to the nine 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 nine. Right. So. Um, Okay, another just another thing with pointer arithmetic. Okay, since um, the the um, uh, array is really just the base address of that block of memory in C and in C plus um, plus. Again, if we if we do something, I'm going to do it with the dynamic my dynamic array instead of my static array. So if I copy the base address of my dynamic array into my pointer, I can do something like this. I can add eight to the address of pointer array, and again, it's not adding just eight; it's adding eight times the, the, the size of my type. So since integers are of size 32, it, it, or of size 4, it, adds, it actually adds 32 to the base address to find the eighth integer in the block of memory. So, and so now, again, this is going to be equivalent to changing the item, the integer index 8 in my dynamic array to 9999, all right? Um, and again, we print them out, so we should see that the my dynamic array value eight got changed to nine 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 nine. All right. So I just wanted to point that out. So once you understand that, so now that you've seen pointers, um, and and I've talked a little bit about arrays, they're, they're really just the the base address of the block of memory. This should give you a better understanding of how passing arrays to functions work, like we used in the first week, uh, first week or two. Right, so when you pass a function to uh, pass a, an array to uh, a function, you're just passing the the base address of the array. So you're really just passing a pointer uh, to the first uh, address of that block of memory of the array. So that's why uh, arrays by default are, end up being passed by uh, reference instead of passed by value. Since you're just passing the base address, if you do anything uh, to index that against that base address and, and maybe change what's being pointed to that by the base address, you're actually changing the memory that's referenced. So when you return from the calling, from the function that you called, the caller will see any changes that you made inside the function. So that's, that's how, you know, arrays being passed by reference basically works. You're passing in a pointer to the base address of the array there. Um, all right, so... As a final thing, um, I've got an example, again, going back to the uh, list type example, we've been, I've been developing a bit all the way back when we started talk, talking about structures. Um, I didn't uh, do everything on this, but um, um, I only did uh, one or two little functions on, on my list. Uh, but um, 
Well, let me go ahead and look at it. Okay, so um, if you remember, the last time that I used my list, we were uh, creating an array of size, I think, 100. So a static fixed size array. And we had some functions like append and prepend. Um, and all we did was, was we error checked so that if we tried to append and we already, if the array was already full, you know, if we already had 100 items, we tried to append the 100 first item on there, uh, we just punted. We just uh, printed out an error message and we didn't do anything. So the append failed. So a more realistic list that would be really useful but would be some, something that uh, would grow dynamically. Um, and it should do it, the user shouldn't have to manage that memory, uh, it should just do it for you. So the user just wants to append items onto the end or the beginning um, and, and leave it to the abstract data type to actually grow or shrink to contain all the items in the list. You know, the user doesn't care, they, they just want the list to, to hold the items that, that the user tells it to. Okay? So that, that's usually what you want an abstract kind of list to be able to do. So now that we're able to use dynamic memory allocation, we can, we can begin to build data structures that do something like that. So let's look at the list type here. So um, uh, as before, we have size. We're going to keep track of the, the current number of, of items in the list. This is just an, a, a list of integers again. Uh, but we keep track. I'm, I'm still going to use a static. Uh, I'm, not, I'm going to still use um, a, an array of values. Okay. So, uh, well, I'll show here. So, but we're going to keep track of how much um, space we've allocated with alloc size. And then uh, the third value is item. So this is the, the same as the array of integers that we used previously, but we define it as an integer pointer because we're going to di dynamically allocate uh, an array of values. Um, and we're going to dynamically allocate a new bigger array of values whenever we need to grow our um, list, okay? So in this uh, list type, um, when, if, whenever you create a list, um, it defaults to having no memory allocated. So it starts off initially with an empty list and with nothing, no memory allocated to hold anything. Okay? So to do that, we start off with, the, there, there's no item, so the size is zero. There's not, no memory allocated, so the allocation size is zero. Um, and we start, we start off by setting item to be null, um, to indicate that, that it's not pointing to anything valid at the moment. Right? So then let me just go ahead and look at the append um, function here. So uh, I didn't implement any other really function here. You can imagine like uh, you'd have to do similar things for prepend. Uh, if you had like a delete item function, you might want to actually shrink the, the list back down. So if it got small enough, um, um, you might grow and shrink your allocated memory and things like that. So, so I only illustrate one thing here, the, uh, the, the growing whenever we try to pin an item and, and the, the, li the list has gotten too big. So the basic idea, um, so, so the, the, if the list is big enough, so, so what happens is, is if you look at the pinned item that I gave you in the example code here, um, if the size is greater, the, if the, the number of items, the size of the list is greater, that is equal to or greater than the current amount of allocation that we have, we're going to, have to do something to grow the list. So everything inside of the if statement handles growing the list. If it's less than that, then um, our current allocation is big enough to add a new item. So in that case, we do we just do what we did before. We just add the the, the value at the end of the item because we're just appending here, and then we increment our size uh, of of the list. You know that, that keeps track of the number of actual items we've got in our list of integers here. So let, let's look at um, how we grow our list dynamically, okay? So uh, we, we first have to start out by allocating uh, a new block of memory, okay? So you have to remember, I mean, initially we have no items in the list, uh, but uh, at, at, at some times we might be growing, and we, st we do have some items in the list. So, what, so algorithmically what you have to do is you have to allocate some new memory, then you have to copy the current items from the old list to the newly allocated uh, block of memory. So you have to copy items from the old block of memory to the new me block of memory. And then we want to be good memory managers, so um, uh, after we've successfully copied everything over, the old block of memory is no longer going to be needed, so we want to free that up so we don't leak memory. 
Uh, and, that, and at the end, then we want to start using that new block of memory that we allocated and then we copied in all of our existing values into. And we want to make certain that this works even if our list is empty, you know, so our current allocation is zero, all right? So, uh, so again, we start by, um, probably should have a comment there, so... Um, Allocate a new block of memory to grow our list into, like that. Um, I just print out like a little log message here every time um, the allocation causes the, uh, the the list, the memory allocated that we have for a list to, to grow. So, so now we've got a new block. Uh, notice, so so we take the allocation size and we go. We increase our allocation in the increments. Uh, so allocation in increment is defined to be 10 here um, at, at the top here. So um, that that uh, can be pretty inefficient. So uh, a more typical thing to do, like when we talk about hash tables later, things like that, is to actually double the size of memory. So you keep keep track of the current allocation, um, and then if you have to grow, um, you would you would uh, make the new allocation size to be two times the current allocation size. I, I, I could have done that here. Maybe I should have done that. But um, um, uh, anyway, so, so we've got a new block of memory allocated um, that's bigger that, than the old one, big enough so we can add 10 new values, basically. Um, so, um, oh, actually, yeah, so, so here's where we're actually allocating the memory. This is just calculating the new size. Here we allocate a, a new block of memory to hold the, the, the items um, um, of our new allocation size. Then we copy them over, so a simple copy list from old items to new items, from the existing items to our new block of memory and new items. Um, and then, yeah, we do the, 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 the deallocate of the old items now. So if we successfully moved everything over, we can deallocate, free up that memory. We no longer need this. And then we have to make certain that we start using the new block of memory. So we can simply do that by assigning, remember, the, the only member variable for our, func for our list type class is item. And allocation size, but uh, so so we assign the, the the base address for the newly allocated memory to be now the the base address that we refer to by item, and of course we have to update the, the new allocation size. So allocation size is, is that new size that we drew by. All right, um, and then we just have string and other things. So so let's. Um, um, Let me, let me just go ahead and compile that and rerun it, make certain that it is running, um, and take a look at it. I'd just look at it to make certain that, it's, that it is actually working here. So, um, so we built, okay, and let's put a breakpoint right at the beginning of where we create our list type. So there it is. So... Um, so yeah, the, 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 this ends up calling the, the default constructor, which just creates an empty list. So if we actually get the, the size, we see that uh, the my list is zero. If you get the allocation size also, the allocation size is zero. So if we pin one item, when, when it's empty, um, it, 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 it grows it immediately to, to be able to hold 10 items, and then we put, and it puts that first item in to the, uh, the, ar the array. So as soon as you call that, you should see that log message about growing the list from its allocation of 0 to allocation of 10. Um, and um, if you look at the, the list, uh, you see that it has one item in it. Although the allocate, it's, it's got enough memory allocated to hold 10, but it's only using one of that size 10. And, and it's got that value 42 that we appended onto the end. Okay. Um, and then we can append actually uh, nine more items, not ten items here. Um, so um, I won't step through all that. Um, let's let's break right here. So uh, that actually filled it up. So now we've got ten items in there. Um, so, you know, t the, the list size is 10. We've, we've still only got enough memory allocated to hold 10 items. Uh, so if we append one more item, then um, you see that, yeah, it grows again. So it grows from 10 to 20 at that point, okay? 
so um, so yeah, so that's that's it. I mean that, and that's you know a very small example, but that's pretty realistic about what's really happening on more complex, high-level data types. So if you're using a high-level language like Java or Python, and you're using like a list, and you're appending items to the list, it's doing things like that. It's managing the memory for you, um, uh, sort of hiding all the details of of allocating and deallocating memory, and maybe copying things if things grow too big. So. Um, okay, so um, I hope those uh, examples are useful. Uh, you know, so this is a class on data structure, so this is kind of really the beginning. You really have the tools now so that we can start really doing the heart of this course. Um, so creating our own kinds of data structures, linked lists and stacks and things like that, um, from using you know pointers and dynamic variables and things like that. Um, all right, so that's it for this video, um, and I will see you uh, in our next video.